we're going to show you now is the classic bike wheel used as a gyroscope demonstration. We usually just call it the bike wheel gyro. We've got a couple different bike wheels here, and we should have some new ones. They're on order now, kid-sized ones. The basic demonstration is fairly easy to show. You grab this wheel, and you give it a good spin, and then you'll notice that it's very hard to tip over. And you'll say, well, wait a minute. If you do this at very low speeds, it just tips right over. You're not going to be able to balance this on one finger at low speeds. So here's another variation on that. Let's take a look at this other way of seeing it. Rob, come over here. Go ahead and put the string on this one. There we go. And we're going to get this up to speed with the Dremel. Always make sure you charge the Dremel batteries the night before. Okay. And so to get this thing going at very high speeds, you can use this Dremel. We want to be careful here. Um, if somebody gets their finger in here when it's at very high RPMs, that's a safety hazard. So you wouldn't want to do this with kids necessarily, or certainly not get it up to max Dremel speed. But let's try this right now. The advantage of the Dremel is you can get this to a much higher speed, and it's even more stable. So I can feel this thing starting to shake. Clearly, this is a dangerously high velocity. I'm glad Rob's holding this and not me. So let's take a look. You can hear it wisping there. And you can see how extraordinarily stable this thing is. And in this case, what's happened here is we've caused this thing to rotate. It's got a very large angular momentum vector. Okay, and that's along this axle. Now, gravity is exerting a force right at the center of the wheel. So that's a torque, or that's a force straight down at the hub of this wheel. And that's going to cause a torque. This is a pivot point. So there's a force. There's a radius to that force. And you're using the right hand rule. There's an R, F. There's a torque this way. And that's why this is twisting around this way. This motion is called precessional motion. Now we can also do a variation on this. If we don't want to talk about precessional motion, we can also talk about conservation of angular momentum. And let's do that next. First, I'm going to slow this down a little bit. All right. And to show conservation of angular momentum, go ahead and get rid of that string. Let's move out of this, move this out of the way here. We've got this rotation stool. Rob, why don't you go ahead and have a seat on there. I'm going to hold the stool in place while he gets positioned, and you're going to want to kick your feet up. So again, I'm just holding him in place by putting my foot on the bottom of the stool so it's not spinning around while he's getting situated. Now I want him to hold this wheel. OK? Like that? Yes, and I'm going to get this up to speed. And what we're going to do is once we get it up to speed, we're going to have him twist this back and forth. And as a result, he's going to have to exert a torque that changes the rotation of this wheel. The wheel then has to exert a torque that changes his rotation the opposite direction. So let's check this out. And if I can do this correctly, let's see. When I spin this this way, we're going to have angular momentum this direction. All right, because this wheel is going to be spinning this way. When Rob turns this upwards, all of a sudden, he's causing the wheel to rotate this direction. So the wheel is going to be rotating uh, counterclockwise as seen from the top. That will cause Rob to rotate clockwise as seen from the top. Let's give it a whirl. OK, let's get this up to speed. Again, the Dremel is nice because it doesn't wear out your hand for several hours. But if you're only doing this once, you, there's no need for a Dremel. You can just spin it once vigorously. With a person as large as Rob Meyer, you definitely want to have a very high velocity. Otherwise, this effect isn't going to be very pronounced. But kids, this, they'll go nuts with this thing. By the way, Rob, don't touch this to your face. <laughs> do my best. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So rotate it so this hand is upwards. OK, now try the other direction. And here's a fun variation. Rob, sit still here. Go ahead and rotate it right now, but I'm going to keep you from rotating. I put my foot on the stool. Now, go ahead and flip it all the way over. Whoa! Flip it back all the way over. Flip it over again. So you can see that as he does this, whenever he's changing the angular momentum of the wheel, he changes direction. Let's go to the original position. Hold it straight up. I'll hold you still. Right? Again, so he can tilt the wheel one direction. Go ahead. And he'll ro rotate. Oh, it's starting to slow down. So you can see, there we go. And this often happens where one direction is slightly preferential, probably because the floor is not level and center of mass going downhill, something like that. But I don't know. 
in any event, you can see that when you tilt this one way, you'll rotate one direction. When you tilt it the other way, you go the other way. What is this? It's conservation of angular momentum. Or said another way, he exerts a torque on the wheel, causing its momentum, or angular momentum, to rotate one direction. Therefore, the wheel has to exert an equal and opposite torque on him, rotating him the other direction. Obviously, the wheel is a lot less massive than he is, so the wheel is spinning much faster than he is. Okay, that's the bike wheel gyro.